Welcome to the first installment of Code Cleanup, in which we're going to take a look at how you can clean up your spaghetti code, how you can take better decisions about your coding standards, and how to better format your comments. Today we're going to take a look at how you can better format comments and uh, make someone that's reading them better understand what you're trying to tell them. All right. So the first tip. The first tip is how to not comment. Don't add redundant comments. I see this a lot in the industry and it's really bugging me out. Um, and let's, let's take a look at these examples here and see what, what I mean by this. So here I have a function that's called change password. It takes in a user ID and a new password. All right, simple enough. I already copied the signature, the body is irrelevant. Um, so what's wrong with the comments in here? Well, let's see first. It says changes the password of a user. Okay, I think we are we can already deduct that through the signature, right? It changes the password and it takes in a user ID. It's pretty self-explanatory. So this line can go away. We can simply just delete that. Next, it says param. This is from Java, uh, Javadoc. And it says user ID is the user's ID. Well, what do you know? This is actually repeating itself, just a little bit of uh, formatting, but it's the same thing. So you can actually delete this because, well, the significance of this field comes from its name. It doesn't matter what you tell uh, the programmer here. He already knows this is the user ID. Okay, so you can also delete this line. Next up, it says new password, the new password for the user. Well, that's also self-explanatory. I'm pretty sure everybody would understand that if you pass in here a new password, it would be for the new, the, for the user passed in here. So this is already, this can go away. And the last line here says, uh, the return value is true if successfully executed. All right, fair enough, and false otherwise. Um, here, this is okay, since it actually gives some significance to this Boolean that's returned. But this negation is useless. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that if it didn't successfully execute, it would return false. All right, so we can pretty much delete this. You don't have to cover the whole domain of a variable. Okay, so that's the first example, right? We deleted a lot of lines. It's now just one line of code and we can already understand what's happening through this signature. One more thing I see very op often happen is uh, in the members of a class. All right, so here we have a class called location and this location has an ID and an address. And what do these comments tell me? It says the ID of the location. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. The ID is already inside the class location. It's already a member of that class. So we can already deduct that it the ID of the location. It can be any other ID. So we can simply remove this piece of code. Same goes for this. It says the address of the location as a string. You can already tell if you look at the signature of this uh, member of this field, you can see, oh, it's called address and is of type string. So this is already useless. And is the address of the location. Well, the address is already inside the location. You don't have to add this. You can simply remove it altogether and that would be the end of it. And that's how the class would look. You can already deduct all this information. I'm not saying that you shouldn't add any comments here. You might want to, but those comments were pretty much useless in this example. All right, let's take a look at the next tip. So tip number two. Be consistent with your comment. All right. So this would be the tip number two. Be consistent with your comments. What this? What does this mean actually? Well, by this I mean have have some sort of format, whether it's from the internet or it's yours. Have some sort of format that looks somewhat all right and you can actually read it well and apply it everywhere. 
all right so try to apply it everywhere in this example you can actually take a look at it and see that here we use we have a function find user and in fact all these three functions are find user and they all take uh, in some different parameters like here is a string here's a number of cats and here's an x and y okay fair enough the problem is with the way they are commented right we have here a, an at param str the string we are searching for that's fine the comment itself is all right and the first user found that has its username start with str all right that's that's fair enough but then we come in here and say oh we no longer have these um these tags here and say it returns the first user that has the exact number of cats given that's all we didn't even have an at param and or at return then the next one says it starts off with gets the first user found that is closest to the coordinate system a uh, coordinates given and then it goes on and says at param x and it starts in with the uh, type of the parameter and then the search x position and y position all right so all these three are different standards they are all right but try to use one of them because that can be confusing you can look at here oh uh, if you want to find the return statement of this function it would be pretty easy you just go here at return the, the first user found that has its username if you go here you'll have to actually take a look in here no, no longer you have access to that tag you don't you no longer have that tag and you have to really uh, read it in a different way all right same goes for this thing i would expect that i would have a return tag down there but i don't instead the uh, what the function returns is actually specified up top instead of down at the bottom right so be consistent consistent with your comments and people will read through them much much easier try to find a format and uh, stick with it okay next next tip tip number three tip number three says add meaningful comments all right so add meaningful comments for who well for the person that's reading those comments and trying to use your code okay so here we can take a look we have a function save and says inserts a user into the database all right fair enough then it says user is of type user and the user's data okay that's not really a hundred percent okay but sure sure enough it works but now as a program i'm gonna take a look at the return value well that's an int what does that int even mean well i don't know it, there's no comment to it and i have to go ahead and take a look at the source code to find out that that int is actually the the user's id or minus one if the users didn't if the user didn't get saved either way if the if the person reading your code reading your uh, function signature has to take a look at the code itself to figure out what's happening there and how to use it then that's a problem so make sure you also add in the return statement for example here would be something like at return it says users id or minus one if um not saved or something like that okay next up in here what what's the issue with this well same almost the same thing here says returns a list with all users part of a certain group we have a function get all that takes in a group id okay but it says returns list of users okay sure and then you have the group id but doesn't specify that if the group id what if the group id is something like minus 10 or a number that doesn't exist what does it happen what does happen actually do i get a an empty list or do i get null right you you don't know so make sure you specify this as well or null if group id not found or something of sorts right so make sure you add this comment and figure out what information is more important for your comment right this was much more important than knowing that it returns a list i'm pretty sure i can take a look at the signature and say okay yeah sure that's a that's a list of users self-explanatory okay so these are my three tips for you that you can apply 
to your comments. So when you add comments, make sure you don't add redundant comments. Those are very annoying and don't help anybody. Secondly, uh, standardize your comments. Try to pick a format and stick with it. And third, add meaningful comments and try to add the most meaningful ones first and then add the ones that are not so important, okay? And as a bonus, here are some questions that you can ask yourself whenever you are trying to code your... Uh, or to add your comments. So, you should ask yourself these questions. Does the signature tell everything you need to know about the code that somebody else is trying to use, right? In our example, here up top, you could see this change password. This signature basically tells e almost everything it needs to know to the user, to the uh, programmer that's trying to use your code, okay? If this were ID, okay, that, then, might be, then it might be kind of ambiv ambiguous, but if this is called user ID, it's pretty self-explanatory. Same with the string. Make sure you name your parameters correctly. Does this comment actually help the one using the code, right? So don't, don't tell the programmer using your code that it returns a list of users because they, they are pretty sure that it does return a list of users, all right? You don't have to actually add this into the comments yourself. All right, so this, these are all my tips for you for today. I hope you learned something from this and uh, do comment down below about what you think uh, are some other ways you can actually improve your comments and subscribe for more. I'm going to be uh, uploading more of these later on. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.